Okay. All right, we're out here in Australia on the Australian landscape, and we're looking for echidnas, also known as the Australian anteater. Now, these guys here are a small solitary mammal, but they're absolutely covered in spikes. Spikes, they're not venomous, but they can be a little bit of a prick to catch. Now, it's funny because you're looking at this landscape thing, well, there must be like a thousand one places to hide, and there literally there is, but there is a bit of a technique in finding them. All it takes, a little bit of intelligence. All right, watch, watch. Echidnas may have home ranges over 100 hectares in size. Population numbers in areas rich in dietary resources will obviously be higher. But still, this is a game of chance, as echidnas are not territorial, but their home ranges often overlap with many individuals. The trick here is to find the ant nests. Now, regardless of the terrain you're in, this technique can be applied anywhere. Instead of walking in just a straight line on your mission to try and find one, try walking around in circles. Well, more like in a spiral format. Starting with an ant nest which has been recently disturbed. Note the diggings on the ant mound. Having spotted a number of active sites, I'm working my way in a spiral motion down the mountain. This is the best way to cover as much surface area as possible and increase your likelihood of crossing paths with your target species. If you understand the nature of the prey item being that of the ant, you will soon realise how effective feeding time becomes for the echidna when he starts to disturb the mound. The meat ant may contain over 60,000 ants in just the one nest, and in just 10 minutes of constant feeding, the echidna can consume over 200 grams of pure protein. By the way, he also has to endure the relentless bites, but I'll get to this a little bit later. And as for facts, the echidna was named after the mother of monsters in Greek mythology, as it was believed to have both the tributes of reptiles and mammals. So there you go. This guy here is a famous Australian echidna. About time. Now, all right, now this is pretty typical. So he's only a small one. You can see exactly what he's doing. Now this is a defense strategy that the echidna will do. So as soon as they come across a predator, whether it be like a fox, uh, it, could be a, it could be a dingo, it could be a dog, it could be a goanna. This is exactly what I'll start to do is I'll start to dig. Now if you've got one in your backyard, the easiest way to get one out is like this, ready? I'll show you. So he's digging down with his front claws. What I like to do is I get my hands down here and I start digging. I try and get my hand under, under, under. Come on. Ow. Stubborn. And I flip. Hand under. It's actually soft underneath, which allows me to do this. And ready? Three, two, one, like a pancake. Woo! Johnny! Oh, look at you, look how cute you are. Now, the echidna, right? Get this. Now, this guy here is a monotreme, and you're thinking, what's that, it's like a type of motorbike or something? But no, a monotreme is an egg-laying mammal, just like the platypus that we have here in Australia as well. Uh, maybe put the camera over there. The sun's like killing me, it's actually been pretty hot today. So, these egg-laying mammals, right, generally what happens is the females, oh, let me get that off, they're covered in stuff, is the females, a month after mating, they'll actually deposit an egg into their pouch, like a leathery egg, white egg. And uh, what will happen is 10 days later, it'll hatch. You, you're thinking, well, that's pretty quick, right? But then what will happen is over the course of about 50 days, the young will actually be suckling from milk pores within the pouch. Now, flies and everything. Now, 50 days comes, and then guess what? She kicks them out. And she actually digs, wherever she digs a hole, she uses like an abandoned hole or a warren. And she'll place them in there, place the young in there. And the young will actually stay there for up to seven months, where she'll keep watch over them, and she'll wean them as well. Isn't that right? Now, I'm actually going to be putting, uh, putting myself to the test today. Now, you see, 
the echidnas have got a very long sticky tongue. It comes with a big advantage when they're feeding. You know, they can go for things like ants and termites, which consist largely of their diet. But you're probably thinking, well, how hard would it be to get like termites and ants? Because they can live in some pretty hard places to get. So today, I'm going to be seeing what sort of sticky situation I'm going to get myself into. Okay. So I thought I would try and stick it out for 10 minutes on an ant nest to give me some sense of an idea of what feeding time is actually like for an echidna. With some well-placed earplugs and a den nearby, I was ready to take on the challenge. Ah. 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 Ah, I got ants in the pants. <laughs> that was a silly idea.